say in Acts chapter 19, verse 1, it said, and it happened well. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you, when you, back, when you believed? And so they said to him, you have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, and to what then will you baptize? He said, well, what, what, to what then will you say? And they said, we were baptized in the repentance. Then Paul said, John did indeed baptize with repentance. He said, but people that they should believe on him, who would come after him, and that is on Jesus Christ. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. And Paul laid hands on them. The Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now, he said the scripture. It's a packed it's a packed house. And then, and now God worked, verse verse 13. He said, and now God worked unusual miracles by his hand. And then he said that, he said, We are going to release the Holy Spirit. He said, and the only people that are offended when the Holy Spirit shows up are those who want the devil to stay in their lives. And I watched 30 people get, were demon-possessed, running, falling, foaming from the mouth, screaming. It took seven, eight people to hold him down. I mean, I saw a little, uh, a teenage boy picking, uh, about to throw men around, and he was carrying them and laying them on the ticket. I sent some pictures, and you see people laying on the platform. They didn't think they were being, the devils were being cast out. Cultural demons, uh, witches and warlocks and demons. And, and uh, somebody come over while we're over here and started putting chicken blood on the, on the, on the uh, floor where we were, you know, where we were going to be preaching and all that. Came by and, and had, and, uh, but that when we got up and we said, Devil, we ain't afraid of you. We ain't scared of that. And that place went roaring nuts. These people are looking for the kingdom message. They're not looking for some nice church and some trendy thing. They're looking for the power of God. And I'm having no back tears talking to y'all. And it's because I fell on my knees on a dirt, on dirt. I fell on my knees on dirt. And I put my hands down on the floor. And I said, God, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed that we are worried about how people are offended by the power of the Holy Spirit. I said, I'm ashamed that I, that I would cater to the offense of a man or a woman when I see people here needing the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I tell you something, I watched my king do his business like he used to do in the book of Acts. And I began to lift my hand and say, Devil, I ain't afraid. I'm coming back to him. And, and I'm going to tell you something. The devil is the only person that's going to be offended when I walk up into that church because I'm going to bring back the power of the Holy Ghost. We've got to seek the spirit of God. <laughs> I don't know what the people are doing there. I hope they ain't looking at me like I'm scared. I hope I ain't scaring, I hope I ain't scaring nobody. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I want I, I, this man of God. He, I mean, he's African. He's African. He's from the Ghana. He asked me. He said, "Man of God," he said. He said, "There's a capsule up here." Uh, the British built, he said, the British built the castle, they picked the Dutch. He said, first the Portuguese come to God. Then the, then the Dutch come, he said, but the, the, the English came and they went them all off. And he said, and up there is a castle, he says, it's where all the African slaves went. He said, I want to take you there. Would you go? I said, oh, I want to go. I want to go. He said, I would take you, what he said to me, I would take you in the tunnel where they walked the black people of Ghana. And locked him in a cage, Bishop, he said to me, until the ships come to pick him up. And I said, really? He said, and they'd be locked in there for three months, sometimes six months. 
pipe like sardines. And then he said that he told them, we're sitting at the table with all his church people, and then he looked at him, all the people right there, and he said, and you, he said, you black people right here in my church. You can't be bitter. He said, how can you be bitter? How can you be bitter? You are not, he said, you are crucified. You are nailed to a cross. If Jesus can't be bitter over what we did to him, then you cannot be bitter over what anybody has done to your race or to your culture because we are kingdom. We are set free from what the ignorance of men did in our history. I'm telling you, I almost fell off the chair. The power of God fell over me. We started praying in the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling y'all this because I told Bishop, I said, Bishop, I got a multicultural church. I want to go up there. I want to see this. I want to sit in that cage. Why? Because I want to minister to the people of America that are in my ministry. I want to know what their ancestors went through. I want to see it in my own eyes. Why? So that when I go to the pulpit and cast out cultural spirits and cultural devils, when I go back and start telling poverty to get up out of our lives, uh, that I know exactly where the devil impregnated and planted that in their DNA. But I'm telling y'all at the Favor Center, the devil does not want our church in Denver, North Carolina. The devil does not want our multicultural Spanish, Black, Asian, uh, uh, Whatever culture walks in there, the devil don't want us there because he knows that we ain't going to compromise when it comes time. We're going to run every religious. Uh, we're going to run every spirit of bitterness. Uh, we're going to run every spirit of hate. Uh, you ain't going to stand on the on the land of the of that twenty one acres of the of the favor sin of property. I mean, you there there are going to be conferences that when people put their foot on that land, the land's going to be the man. Because God told me to go back and redeem the land, redeem the land. And I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, every man you receive, you've taken back the land. I'm telling you, this is this is crazier than I, I'll sit here crying and weeping. He said, son, that's why hell's fought you. Son, that's why I'm taking time to train you. That's why I didn't let all the big preachers keep have you hanging with them all the time. I kept you just enough to grow and learn. He said, because when I get done doing what I'm going to do in Hickory, it's going to sound like the shot found around the world during the Revolutionary War. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I'm feeling the anointing in my bedroom right now. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost in my <laughs> I'm feeling, I'm feeling, and, and, and I'm telling you, the unusual is about to happen. God's about to do the unusual. Businesses are going to start growing under unusual circumstances. Marriages are going to be here. And I'll tell you, you're sitting there listening to the sound of my voice right now. I'm telling you, you better cut off friends. You better cut off carnal living. You better cut off people that try to stay and keep you the way you used to be. Because, see, the devil knows who you used to be. And the devil knows who you, who you are right now. And you've got friends and you've got people that know who you used to be and know who you are. But God wants to reveal who you're going to be. And who you're going to be has got the devil shake. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. The devil is afraid of you. He's afraid of what he's giving you, the secret power to deliver somebody else. That's what's in me. That's what's in everybody sitting at the pregnant nation. Everybody that's listening on the Internet. I was preaching today on Periscope, and I had 20-some people texting me on Periscope from South Korea. South Korea was sitting on the Periscope today hearing the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about... There's a move of God coming. I'm not going to miss it. Now, you might want to miss it. You might miss it. Miss it. You might want to miss it. You might sit there. Look at somebody beside you right now and say, I'm not going to miss it. You might miss it. Look at somebody beside you right now and say, you might miss it, but I'm not going to miss it. You might miss it, but I've decided, hell or hot, decided I am not going to miss. I'm not going to miss when God comes. The river. <laughs> if, I'm still coming, if I'm still coming through there, I hope I'll write. <laughs> listen, 
I'm telling you, you better know right now, I'm the morning's all over me. I've been sitting here sick, crying, crying for my baby girl, crying for my wife, crying for... I mean, you know, I'm over here. I've been, I've been over here. I've been feeling all by myself. And, but you know what? I found a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. I found a friend that touches you more than being married. I have found something that I have lost in a long time. That is that thing is a God who is bigger than the devil who tries to keep people in bondage. I believe it as a youth pastor, and I wasn't afraid of no religious people. I'd get up and preach as a youth pastor. I didn't care if they hated me. I didn't care if they fired me. Then I pastored a church and got all pastorized and worried about worried about the tithers and you start worrying about who can help you pay the debt. And you know what? I ain't worried about it because I was laying here in my bed the other night and God said, if I be for you, son, it don't matter if the whole world's against you. I am the king of the universe. He said, the earth is the Lord. I didn't say America was the Lord or Africa. I said the whole entire planet. Is mine. And if I found he said, if I was, then he said to me, he said, God said to me, every night, never had a good sleep. He said, I pulled, he said, I pulled man out of, out of, wealth out of man. Man pulls wealth out of land. <laughs> he said, if you want to see wealth, it ain't coming to you. I'm about to reach inside of you and pull the wealth that I hid in you from the day of creation. He said, because I hide my secrets in earthen vessels. So I've hid my treasure in that frail person that you thought. That, and, 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 and so I woke up today and I started reading about Rahab. And, and before I went to preach today, I started reading about Rahab, and I found out that Rahab, great great granddad, she's of the bloodline of King Perez, and King Perez was the king that protected the chief son of uh, Jacob's son Judah, and he said that Rahab had a bloodline that, that protected Judah, and that Rahab owned the hotel, she owned the inn on the wall of Jericho, and that Rahab. Because of the economy crunch, you know, they back in her day, the, the, the prostitutions and the and, and the, the those kind of houses were like they are today. The hotels of that day also had uh, the brothels. They also had brothels where the, some of the rooms were used where women uh, made money. And Rahab had to pay her bill, so she turns her hotel into a brothel house. And that's how comes. So watch this. Watch this. The Bible says. The Bible said that the walls, none went out and none came in. This is what God said to me today. He woke me up in his, his verse, and he said, that's not true because two of my spies got in. And I come up, I come up out of my seat, and I began to walk the floor because he said to me, it don't matter what wall hills build around your life. And he's talking to me about my, my daughter, Jordan. He said, I don't care what walls are around your son. I don't care what walls are around your children. I don't care how much the devil thinks he's tightly shut up. He said, when I'm ready, I'll send my spies in, and I'll use one of his agents to get in. He said, i use Rahab. He said, but I'm going to tell you something. He said, I'll tell you something. He said, what if Rahab had not have went through the season of loss? What if Rahab wasn't who she was? I couldn't have did what I needed to do. He said, so there's a season in everybody's life where there's going to be a Rahab. He said, but Rahab came out of that wall, and she married Solomon, the, the man, one of the spies. God, she came out. And the, one of the spies, she was a very beautiful woman, Rahab, was Rahab. The word Rahab, the word Rahab means healing. The word Rahab means deliverance. The word Rahab means repentance. She came out, and Solomon married her. Solomon was in the line lineage of, of, of royalty, and nobody knew it. And he fell in love with her and married her. And in that Rahab was the roof. And here's what God said to me. He said, when I get done 
your daughter's going to be one of my grandparents. Hang on. Trying to catch my breath. He said, Listen, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to. If you can see the sky, you know I'm the back spot. I fell in the floor and I began to cry. And she would not sit to me. Stop fighting me and start trusting me. That when I'm done, your Jordan will be in one of my ribs. And out of that, I will pull a woman. You just got to be I'm working out. Rehab. And man, he said, and you tell everybody, I don't care where they are, I'm the God that comes with them out. He said, I don't care how tight hell has shut the gates, I have somebody on the inside that's going to come when I'm ready to get me out. Hallelujah, shot can y'all feel the anointing there? Is the anointing flowing in that house? Is the anointing flowing in there? Huh? Brother, brother, I'm about to fall on the floor here. If, I, if you hear my floor drop, just show the video and leave me alone. I'll be back to you saying. <laughs> you ought to lift your hand. I, I preached to a packed full house today. I preached to a packed full house. And I said, a white man came here. And put your lineage in bondage. I said, Well, I'm a white man, and I've come back to tell you that devil is a liar. <laughs> you are free, and it ain't in America. Your freedom ain't in America. Your freedom is stuck in this land called Africa because Luke 1721 said the kingdoms leave their here, that the kingdom of God is within you. And I watched people falling and crying, put their faces in their hands because they, they've been conditioned to believe that they can just get to America. And I said, you don't need to get to America. You need to get the king unlocked in you. Yeah. And that's what I'm telling these people, you people. Church is not something. It's faith and praise, worship, and, and children's church. It's, this is not stuff we're just doing, and you can just turn on and off as you feel like it. This is a lifestyle, because over here, if you don't have it, you ain't got nothing else. Here, if you get Jesus, that's all you got, and you're going to have to build it. But we in America, we just abuse God, abuse God, and we made him like a drug. You know, we need him, we yell for him, but when we're fine, we put him back in the bottle, stick him on the shelf. But I break that mindset in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm, I'm, I'm taking Jesus out of the bottle of religion in my life, and I'm breaking the cotton picking bottle. Ain't never putting them back in it either. I dare somebody sitting right there looking at somebody and saying, I ain't putting them back in my bottle. <laughs> oh, I'm coming loaded. I, I, I did it you know, when I got done preaching. The church is packed. The church, they were out in the streets. When I got done preaching, they jumped up and they started singing. And, and I'm telling you, I literally almost could not stand. Marianne, I could not stand. Jerry, is Jerry at church today? Did Jerry make church today, Daryl? Yeah. Better, you better make church. I hate that the fire on the front. <laughs> <laughs> These people jumped up. And Jerry, you're coming back next year, I don't think. Bishop Alate said, you bring your son. That's what he said to me. You're sitting because you'll bring your son, your seed. You bring your son to Africa next year. I said, you want me to send my son? I, 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 I come, then I send him. He said, no, you come too. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> he said, you, you bring your son because God got in him the spirit of a deliverer. 
I said, okay, you the man, you the prophet. We call him the general. You the general, you the general. These people jumped up and started singing. It is well. Do you have the video there? Did it come through? Watch, watch this video for a second. Watch this video. I'm telling you, I almost went out. These people jumped up, and this is what they start singing. I hope I can hear it. Hey, Stop the video for a minute. Did they just get done singing? Did they just get done singing the people? You ought to lift your hand and sing it with me. You ought to say it as well. There's nothing worth going through that God cannot turn around when you're okay with it. You're okay with God in the midst of your storm. It is well. I threw my hands up and cried. And I said, baby, when I watch people jump up and just start screaming, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Did, did the video stop, Daryl? Do you know what other song? That you blew me away. They started all shouting and singing, "Showers of blessings, showers of blessings." Shower. That's an old song. My mom used to sing to "Showers of blessings." I won't try to sing it. "Showers of blessings." Then you know that old song. They were screaming it. Showers with your blessings, oh Jehovah. Oh, Jesus, showers, which are best. I'd like everybody here sitting there, and I know maybe they're watching on the Internet or just hearing me. I'd like you just to lift your hands wherever you're sitting right now. And they'll tell you, I said, oh, Jesus. I'd like every man to lift his hand. I'd like every father to lift his hand. I'd like every teenager. I'd like, I'd like you to lift your hands and just say, Lord, showers with your goodness. Showers. Showers with your blessings, Lord. Shower us, God, with your power. Now, I, I don't care if you don't understand it. Maybe, maybe you're still learning it. Maybe you're sitting there, but I dare you to lift both your hands. Don't worry about what your wife's doing. Don't worry about what your, your husband's doing. Just lift your, don't worry about what you're going through. Just for a moment, just lift both your hands up and just say, God, shower my house with your glory. Shower my body with your presence. Lord. Shower my heart. Now. And some of you, while you're saying that, you need to repent like me because you were raised in church and you've been so churchified that you been dried up and been petrified and you think Jesus is okay with you and he's really not okay with you. He's just like he was with me. There's certain areas that he said, I'm not okay with no more. And I started doing what you're doing right now. I just said, God, shower me with your blessing. Shower me with your glory. Shower me, God, with your power. Change things in me. Change desires in me, God. Make me somebody you're proud of. Make somebody that pleases you every day. Don't let me ignore someone when I got the anointing to be a Peter and John on the way to the temple and some silver and gold hat. I know. Don't make me become so engrossed in my own pain that I don't know how to call on the Holy Ghost to choke out that devil that's on your children. Oh, shower us, God. Shower us with your blessing. And I don't mean money. I don't mean money. I mean your presence. I mean your power. I mean your anointing. I mean your glory. Shower us, God. Saturate us that our paths may be dripping with your abundance, God, so that whatever need is in. God, there's 12 gifts of the Holy Spirit. God, I release all 12 gifts in the favor center right now. I release all 12 gifts. Well, how about 
I release the gifts of the Holy Ghost, God, that we'll repeat Acts. We'll relive the book of Acts, God. And we don't have people talking about us like they did in the book of Acts. They'll be afraid to ask us to come to the hospital. They'll be scared to bring us to the funeral home because they're afraid we'll put them out of business because we are not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. We are going to save the city. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. What your hands lifted and you're asking the share. We're not done with the ghetto. We're not done with what's around. God's moving us up to 21 acres. And then we're coming back there to get everybody out of there. Out of there. And we're going to bankrupt the soup kitchen because when the kingdom comes in, you don't need a soup kitchen because there'll be no lack found in the kingdom. We come in to take the city. The city is going to be a kingdom city in the name of Yahshua Hamashiach. That's why I was out. The Holy Spirit said to me, said, you have no idea. You have no idea what this uh, bilingual thing you're doing. He said, you think you're just trying to reach the Spanish? He said, no, you're bringing kingdom to another culture. He said, you have no idea what I'm about to do. He said, you think you think you can figure me out? You ain't never going to figure me out. When you get to figuring me out, you just got to a little bitty fragment of even what I am. I am so much bigger than you could ever dream. He said, but I got to move you in increments. He said, you have no idea what I'm about to do in Hickory. He said, but I know what I'm about to do. I'm about to put the kingdom on the move. <laughs> We're going to eat the... The bishop asked me tonight, would you please preach on eat the lamb? Will you preach eat the lamb tonight with all my people? We're going to take communion after you teach us how the kingdom's on the move. In the name of Jesus. I don't even know how long I talk. We're going to take up an offering. We're going to take up an offering for this phone bill. We're going to have to take up a seat for this phone bill. I had a guy, no shoes on his feet, walk up to me, pastor of the church, no shoes. Listen, I had a guy. I had a guy walk up to me, pastor of the church. Uh, it's a precious man. Got down on his knees with white hair, yeah, white hair, yeah, white pencil in, in the dirt. Kiss my feet. Kiss my feet. I was starting to get, 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 what you have told me today. You have set me free, man of God. And I said, no, I didn't set you free. I'm not the key. I'm the deliverer of the key. Jesus sets you free. He is the key of life. And he gave me his cell phone that he had. I got to sit right here in my bed. I tried to give it back to him. He wouldn't let me have it. He said, this, all I have is my cell phone. I said, how are you going to call somebody if you're giving me? I'm going to bring it back and show everybody in history. We'll take it back. It should be a thing. I said, how are you going to call people if you're giving me your cell phone? You know what he said? I don't need nobody now that you give me this truth about Jesus. I got the cell phone. <laughs> Now, 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 you tell them, uh, all you folks, don't turn wide and scared on me. I'm not going to take up a cell phone offer. You ain't got to give up your cell phone. <laughs> well, I don't know what else to tell you. I can preach another three. I mean, you know, here they have church all night long. But uh, I know we, we, I'm going to try and let y'all watch that little video I sent. Uh, and uh, just want you to know I'm, I value and I'm, I appreciate it. I heard the men's thing went great yesterday. So, I, I tell you, the Holy Ghost is all over me right now. I don't want to get off the call, but uh, you, you just let the showers and blessings. You go home today. When you go home today, you, you lay there, maybe for a moment. Don't turn on your TV. Don't do what you normally do. Do something unusual today. Do something for your for the man of God today. Do something for me today. Don't do what you usually do when you first get home. Don't just sit there quietly just for a moment. Close your eyes and just say, Holy Spirit, I'm yours. 
benefits. Anything in my life that displeases you, I give you permission to fill me with a power. I want to be more than just a church goer. Okay? You do that. You see what happens. Now, if that happens, you can't keep it. You say, I ain't coming back to the paper center because it scared me to death. It's okay. We still love you. We st- we're going to still do what we do. We'll catch you on the other side. But if you get touched with the Holy Ghost, let it happen. Let the power of God be with you to death. You're going to change something in your life. I promise you that. Well, Daryl, I got a high school pastor there. Pastors, can you hear me? Yes, we can all hear you. I don't know. I don't know the order of service. I don't even know what to do. Y'all's command me. Tell me what you want me to do. We I'm got. Hang it. Up. We're good. <laughs> I love you. All right. And we're good. I love y'all. Hey, everybody, give God a praise. I'll be home Tuesday. I'll see you Wednesday night. I love you. I heard the men thing with Greg Ron. Thanks, man. I can't wait. I got men calling about this conference. I think we're gonna have us a Holy Ghost conference. This in September, if there's ever man sitting in that audience, but I don't care if you've never been. If you ain't never been, you need to go sign up. I'm talking to Roy. Roy and the Rodney. Roy, I see you sitting right over there on the left. You need to go <laughs> get up and you go to the wrong side of the table. And Roy, Richie's daddy. I'm talking to Richie's daddy right now. I just, right I just saw him sitting right there. Is, is, and you go back to the wrong table and you sign up. And you and, and I'm gonna sow the seed and I'm gonna pay your way to go. I'm paying your whole trip. If you can't go, it's an excuse. Because the bishop's gonna take care of you. And I'm gonna give you spending money if you need it in Jesus' name. <laughs> but I know you don't need it. <laughs> but I give the Holy Ghost just put you in my spirit when I said that. And I saw you sitting there and I know you're a precious man and you love God. I'm telling you, there's gonna be something that happens that's gonna change, I believe, even the genealogy, Roy of your family. God's going to break something in your family. I, I don't care. I just got to prophesy. I'm going to prophesy. But Roy, God's going to change some things in your bloodline. Even back three generations, say the Lord. In Jesus' name. Look. He receives uh, it. Uh, 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 as a matter of fact, you ought to lift his hands because the Holy Spirit says so. He's even pulling out He's pulling out some ideologies and hurts that have been so inbreded in his heart, in his past. God said, but Roy, you are my son. You are my son. You are my son. Roy, you are my son, saith the Lord. May I call you forth now to finish your life under the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know. Hey, I got I don't fuck this phone. I'm gonna talk it all to somebody else. Kinda is 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 the spirit moving? Yes. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's crazy. It's crazy. I'm telling you. Some of you need to go to that altar right now, and you need to burn up the lust for something. Thing. Some of you need to burn the lust up for partying. Some of you need to go to the altar. You need to burn up the desire that the things of the devil are more interesting to you than the things of God. I'm telling you, some of you need to get up, get up and say, I'm done with bitterness, and walk to that altar and put your knees in it and say, I won't come off this altar until God moves me. Some of you need to get up and go to that altar and fall down and say, I have been running around and sleeping with everybody I can think of just because I'm looking for some kind of healing. And God said, stop looking for something you ain't never going to find. It's in the Holy Spirit. It's in the power of Jesus' name. Some of you need to go and forget how you were treated as a child and how you were treated on the playground and know that God's got greatness locked up in you. Some of you sitting there right now need to get up and go to that altar and fall down and say, oh, God, I don't want to miss what you're doing in my life. I don't want to miss what you're doing in my life. I don't want to miss what you're going to do in my children's life. Some of you need to get up and quit being angry and bitter and strifeful and racist. Some of you, you've got some perversions in your family. You're doing perverted things in your house. God said you need to go to the altar and you need to 
burn it in the presence and tell the devil and go home and kill the snake in your house. And some of you need to get some of that oil that's sitting up there on my platform that y'all think we can sit there and look at and go put it on your hands, uh, go back to your neighborhood, go back to your house and, and stick it on your doorpost and command that perverted spirit to come out of your house and to come out of your children and to come out of your marriage. Boy, I feel an apostolic anointing on me right now. In the name of Jesus. Some of you need to lay hands on your forehead, lay hands on your mind. Some of you need to burn up that addiction of marijuana. I curse marijuana all the way to the root. I curse the deception that a generation is trying to believe that marijuana is just an herb. It's just a little innocent weed. It's so innocent. Why is it robbing you of your future? If it's so innocent, why is it robbing people of marriage and health? Why is it putting them in addictions that they came out of? It is not innocent. That's what Satan wants you to do. If you can't kill the serpent, he wants you to start making it a pet. Break the back and curse of the devil and demonic spirit and clean up your act. Because God's coming with fire in the name of God. Because there ain't nobody sitting in that church getting above their bishop. And I laid on my face on dirt, repenting over my things, took my fears, my failures, over my wrong focuses in life. I got on my face and said, God, I ain't leaving Africa the same way I came. I've been sick and under attack because the devil knew the new fire. Satan fears me. Satan fears me. He's always feared me. He feared me when I was a teenager because I would stand on the front bed of a truck and preach like nobody ever preached. He fears me because he knows deep down inside I ain't afraid of him. I, he, he don't scare me. We coming back to cut the snakes and off. Good God, my God. Oh, Jeremy playing behind me. What's going on? Talk to him. People, I'm telling you, somebody sitting there right now, you need to go to that all. I, I, I hope people are hearing me. And they just say, God, forgive me. Forgive me. For, three people listening to my voice right now, or, or maybe on the internet, you need to fall to your knees and repent for your religiousness. That's what the Holy Ghost just said to tell you. He said you need to repent because he's been very angry at your pious, arrogant, religious attitude. And he said, and I'm not pleased with it, and that's why I haven't answered your prayers, Lord Grace, because I don't answer the prayers of pious religious people. I answer the prayer of my disciples. I answer the prayers of my disciples, those that follow me, no matter what. And you don't pin over it. You don't pin over it. That's all I got to say about that. Pastor, pastor, pastor needs to take over the service right now. I don't, I don't know. But forget the video. Forget the video. Pastor, you need to go back up there. You need to worship, and you need to bring people to that altar. And you need to, and y'all get the oil out. Y'all need to be anointing people with oil. And you need to be saying, this is it. We are done. We serve notice. We make a fiction notice. Because when Paul laid hands on them, God worked unusual miracles in their if he's going to do it in the book of Acts, chapter 19, he's going to do it in Acts 29 in Jupiter, North Carolina. Acts 29, we just know about a new chapter in the book of Acts. It's called book chapter, book chapter 29. Acts 29 is about to happen in the month. If you're going to get that all out and do what the man of God tells you to do, you're going to see demons come up out of people's minds. You're going to see the person get up off of somebody. Insanity is going to move out of somebody. Listen, divorce is going to be somebody's life. Their cancer is going to dry up on somebody right now because that's the unusual in Jesus' name. Y'all can take the seat back and do it all later. I'm going to get off the phone and let Pastor take over the service. She's anointed. She's trained. She knows what to do. She's anointed. There, y'all know what to do. Y'all know how to do it. And Ron, yes. Ron's sitting there. Y'all know what to do right now, my Lord. We're going to worship in these altars. Actually, y'all. Actually, I'm going to sit here and pray while y'all do it. Love y'all. Grand earth has quaked before. Moved by the sound of his voice. 
and seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard and through it all through it all my eyes are on you and through it all And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well with me. Come on, these altars are open this morning. There's some things many of you, Bishop, was talking to that you need to lay some things down. Far be it from me to not believe Even when my eyes can't see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea But God, through it all through it all, my eyes will be on you. And through it all, through it all, it is well. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well. It is
you need to make your way down today. Whatever you're going through, maybe you need to lay your flesh on this altar today. If you're clean right now, just worship him. Come on, if he's done something for you today in this place, we worship you, Jesus. We're grateful, we're so thankful for you, Lord. No matter where I've been, it's well with me, God. You know, when you say that, we've all been through pain and hurt. We all have to do the same thing. We have to react the same way. Forgiveness and thankfulness. We forgive and we're thankful. We're thankful no matter how it looks. We forgive no matter how bad it was. We walk in forgiveness. If we don't forgive, Jesus Christ does not forgive us. Let me tell you something. This life is short compared to eternity. This life is a vapor. These maybe, if you get lucky and you get 70 or 80 years, that is nothing. This life is not important. What we do for Jesus in it is important. But this life is meaningless compared to eternity. If you don't know Jesus, I want you to come down here. If you have never asked Jesus into your heart today, I want you to make your way down here this morning. If you need to get things right in your heart with him, you've let other things get in the way, make your way down here. We want to pray with you. Salvation is easy. Come on. Jesus, the life that Jesus has called us to is not hard. Let me tell you why. Because he has given us the power to overcome everything in this life. 
You've been endued with power. If you don't know Jesus, I want to make sure before you leave here today that you know Jesus. Come on, just a few seconds. If you need to say that prayer, don't be ashamed. So if you're ashamed of him, here be ashamed of you. Make your way down right now. I'm just going to give you a few seconds. If you need to get something right, ladies, we have women down here to pray with you. Men, there, this is this is a, a powerful, strong thing that we do. We got guys to pray with you right here. Just a second or two left. If you haven't made it right in your heart today, I want to give you that opportunity. We thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody else in the place that says, I need to come down here and lay some things at this altar, some flesh, come on, some history, some turmoil, some grief. Maybe you're carrying grief around, and you need to come lay it down. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And through it all, through it all, it is well. power and authority over the storm in your life. We trust the waves and wind still know his name. They still know his name. So let go my soul and trust in him. The waves and wind still know his name. The waves and wind still know his name. Just sing it one more time. And it is well. We lay it down before you, Lord. With my soul. It is well. Bring just a few more seconds with my soul. It is well with my soul.
Aren't you glad there's a rock that you can fall on today? So blessed to know Jesus. Look, he bore our sorrows, our grief. Upon that cross, he took our guilt and our shame. Amen. To set us free from poverty and sickness and disease. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. You can be seated real quickly today. We have a video to show you. I think we'll wait and maybe uh, show it on Wednesday when Bishop gets back. It's an awesome video. The church, the pictures that you saw there were not the church that he has been preaching at all week. He's been to a few other places. Um, that was a church, a big church there today that he preached at. But the church is still in construction. And uh, it doesn't have a floor. It has walls. And it doesn't have a roof. So they've been preaching under the open sky. Um, the doctors are on strike there in Ghana. It's socialist medicine. And they are on strike. So they, this team that Bishop is with, they have brought doctors and medicines. And he said by the thousands, people have been lined up. And in one part of the building, they're helping as many people as they can. In another part, pastors from all over, very rural. When he said this pastor did not even have shoes, okay? So the Africa that you've maybe seen on TV, that, those pastors, so they're having, they've started churches all over. So these pastors have come in for training. And so every day they've been experiencing training sessions on pastoring and what to do and pro how to solve problems. And uh, so they're doing that. He said there were pastors there who came and had never in their life seen a doctor. So, the, so they're doing so much, and we want to be a part of it. As you know, you know, we have our church in Liberia, the Favor Center of Liberia, Pastor Romeo, and this is another way that we're being connected. And so that was Liberia. Now this is Ghana. We're excited. This is our time that we take up our tithe and offering. If you're new here, sir, our bishop is not usually in Africa, and so we don't usually have service that way. He's usually here. And he will be here on Wednesday and Sunday, so we want you to come back. Um, but he was live. And that still amazes me. We were able to see him this morning in Skype. But amazes me that he can just, you know, call us and we can all hear him halfway around the world. Um, but I know, get ready. I'm telling you, you could hear it in his words. Get ready when he gets back here. Amen. We're making a life change. But our tithe today... I know one of the things that, that I was going to ask a question is, you know, the Bible asks the question, will a man rob God? And the answer is yes. And the Father considers that when you withhold your tithe, because he said the tithe belongs to me, a tenth of your increase belongs to me. When you withhold it, he considers it theft. And so the question in the Bible says, will a man rob God? Because they're saying, saying, how do we return to you? Because he said, if you return to me, then I'm going to bless you. And they're like, what do you mean return to you? How do we return to you? And he said, you return to me because one of the things that's keeping us separated is that you do not give what belongs to me back to me. You hold your tithe. Now, we're going to take up our tithe and offering together. One of the things that blessed me so much and blessed Bishop beyond measure to see these people I told you last week that in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, they were talking to the Macedonian churches. And it says, out of the most severe trial, and listen to this, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty. So it wasn't out of their wealth and out of their riches that they were joyous. It was out of their severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty. Out of those things welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. That was out of their trial and out of their poverty. How many of you have not stretched yourself in your offering in a long time, or maybe you never have. Maybe you look at your budget and it is, this is what's comfortable. I promise you, you're probably going to stay close to where you're at for a while. 
It's about bringing in our best. It's about sacrificing. It's about stretching ourselves. You know, Bishop and I, we come up with an amount unless the Holy Spirit lays something on us. And we, we've been doing the 112 a week for a very long time. And when he started feeling that 6511, I said, I really I feel like I, I need to do the 6511, and I, but I don't want to do less. I'm given 112. I've been doing that for good two, maybe more years. I don't want to not do the 112. I want to I want to increase myself. And 6511 is less than 112. And the Holy Spirit said, well, then do two of those a week. So I've been doing two 6511s every week. Look, you have to stretch yourself. It's not out of our riches. Bishop and I began believing and understanding seed sowing before we were even in this building. There were every other week I had um, about $110 left out of my budget. That was for my groceries, my gas, anything unexpected, and my seed. And we had two kids. And we, we started sowing. And we started stretching at that season of our life. when We didn't have hardly anything. There were other weeks during the month, you know, because bills come different times, that we didn't even have that much. It was like $70 or $80 I had to do everything with. And you just hope and pray. Many of you know what I'm saying, that nothing goes out of the ordinary. Nothing goes wrong that week. Well, we got to, because where is it going to come from? But we knew about stretching and sacrifice, and we started tr trusting God. He has been so faithful. I don't put limits on him. See, when you're afraid to give, you put limits on your father. You limit his power. You limit your authority by the word. You limit what he can do, how he can show himself in your life. And so he said, Bishop said that these people on dirt floors, some of them without shoes, who had absolutely nothing to their name, they were running to the altar to give their seed. Joyous, out of their severe trial, out of their great poverty, welled up a generosity that said, this is all that I have, it's my seed, but God, we trust you in this thing that you will multiply it. They were give. There, I'm telling you. He said they are such givers, and here in America, we just won't lose God. We just want it. We're, we're afraid. There is nothing to fear. Fear is not part of the spirit of God. He has given us peace and a sound mind. That means over your money, over your job, over your future. Amen. But in their trial, welled up generosity. So I'm asking you today: What are you sowing? This is not your tithe. We're going to put that in there, too. I'm talking about your offering today. How are you going to stretch? What are you going to do to sacrifice today? So get an envelope there. They're green. They're right there on the table. Make sure you're sowing today. Maybe it's a small amount. Look, the, the widow that gave the mites gave greater than any one that day. So it's not because you can only give a dollar. It's not equal giving here. It's equal sacrifice. Now, this is our tithe and our offering. We're bringing it before the Lord today. So everybody's sowing if you can. You can do something. I don't care if it's a quarter. You're unlocking something in your life. You're saying, I'm getting involved. I don't care where I'm at financially. I'm getting involved. I'm going to let God do something in my finances. He wants us to be blessed. One of the things that he broke on the cross was poverty. He came that we might have life and have life more abundantly. Amen. Are you ready today? They're going to receive our tithe and our offering this morning. Play me something upbeat. I don't know. There you go. Come on. We're blessing the Lord today. Thank you. 
you could, you can stand to your feet. We're going to pray and get an agreement over this. Finances are important to everybody. Amen. But God, we as a people, we get together right now. We're in one mind and one accord. First off, we thank you for the power of increase. We thank you for wisdom, God, and how that helps us increase. We thank you for favor at our jobs, God. We thank you that you open doors and you close doors for us. We thank you that you have given us the ability, the Bible says, to get wealth. We thank you for that. Now, God, we're giving some of us sacrificially, Father. We're being obedient today in our tithe and our offering. But we just ask you to do what your word says that you will do, that you will increase us, that you will rebuke the devourer that comes at us, that we will have everything, every time, in any time of need that we go through, God, we will have what we need, that people will praise you when they see the blessing on our lives, that people will praise you when they hear the testimony testimony and the miracle of what you have done in our finances, that people will praise you and come to know you, God, when we can help pull people out of their situation, when we can bless children, when we can pay for people's college, when we can help moms and dads who are struggling, Father. We thank you for increase. We thank you for the power over our finances. We thank you that you broke poverty and sickness and disease in our life. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Be blessed. Bishop will be back on Wednesday. We love you. You have a blessed day. If you're watching with us this morning, we know it was a little bit out of the ordinary. Uh, our bishop is in Africa, and he was here just so we could see, hear him, not see him. But we hope that you were blessed and that you feel the way we feel, that a move is coming. And we'll see you on Wednesday.